Chapter 12, The Day of Mothers and the Bond of Brothers Beach City, Crystal Temple Naruto was sitting on the couch as he was reading the tale of the utterly gutless shinobi and he actually liked the book as he could connect easily with the hero, Naruto. He never noticed a small shadow quietly chuckling to itself as it hid behind the kitchen counter. I ran through the forest with hopes of biding my time so that I could defeat this ninja, I had little time as I could tell he was getting closer by the minute and I needed to lose him. Don't bother hiding, Naruto. The mysterious ninja had said, you don't stand a chance of escaping my sights. I'll kill you and get a profitable reward for your head. I quickly ducked towards my right before ducking behind a tree as the ninja ran by me without a second thought. I felt my heart tracing but I calmed myself down as to not draw attention with good memories of my past. Sensei, my teammates taught those three children I had met in the rain. I hated to leave them like that, but there wasn't anything else I could teach them as they now continued their own individual paths if their lives. Sometimes dot sometimes I wished that I could have brought them with me and show them more of the world outside of the rain and orphanage. Don't think you can get away from me that easily, Naruto. I hear the ninja yell through the forest, signaling to me that he was still on my tail. Oh Naruto! Said a voice, breaking the blonde's focus on the book, you think you could help me with something? Naruto looked up and froze with a blush as Pearl stood before him in nothing but a towel loosely wrapped around her slim frame with an alluring look on her face. I was wondering if you would like to join me in a nice relaxing bath and help me wash my back said Pearl as she turned around with the towel slightly falling to reveal more of her back, I could even help you wash your back as well. The purple gem turned around before leaning towards Naruto's ear and whispered, and so much more. Naruto's head flew back from the nosebleed he had received while Pearl was on the floor laughing like mad. I can't believe how easy it was for you to fall for that, said Pearl before revealing that she was actually amethyst. I should thank Jiraiya for giving me these ideas for messing with you and Pearl. Naruto gave the purple gem a sharp look as he said, why on earth would you do that? You do know that Pearl will kill you if Steven were to see you doing such crap. Ever since she read the Kuka series, Amethyst has used some of the material for pranking both Pearl and Naruto as she just loves messing with the two lovebirds. While Naruto has seen Garnet read those books. She was never as open as Kakashi was and never done anything like Amethyst has done. Pearl was obviously disgusted with the books as she ranted about the books having no form of plot, degrading women as objects, and adding that she wouldn't let Steven near those books even with a 39 and half foot pole. I'm going to seriously harm Pervy Sage for this, Naruto thought as even Kurama was laughing at his plight. The blonde stuck tissues in his nose as Garnet and Pearl arrived. What happened? Pearl asked when she saw the blood on Naruto's shirt. Take a wild guess, Naruto said as he motioned towards the still laughing Amethyst. Amethyst! Pearl shouted as she blushed while remembering what the shorter Jim had done to her, how could you do that to my boyfriend? What if Steven or somebody else were to see you do that to Naruto? With a chuckled, Amethyst countered, oh, I'd get away as they would see you giving Naruto those ideas. Enough! said Garnet as a slight chilling aura breezed through her voice, making Amethyst stop cold, I'll be gone on a mission for a few days, so you best behave. Especially for Steven. Everyone there nodded before Naruto walked up and said, will you be alright by yourself? I can go with if you like. Garnet ruffled Naruto's hair and said, don't worry, Naruto, Mama will be alright by herself. You be good and be there for Steven. The two gave each other a short, loving hug before Garnet got on the pedestal and teleported out of the temple, but not without giving the blonde a small kiss on his forehead. Please be safe, Kechan. Well, said Amethyst as she got up from the floor, better get some good laughs in before things get really moody around here. Confused, Naruto gave Pearl a question looks as the gym said, oh, that's right I completely forgot about that day. I hope Steven will be alright this time. The blonde was about to ask what the two gems were talking about until something told him to look at the calendar and as he looked at it, Naruto finally discovered what Pearl and Amethyst were talking about. Mother's Day Pearl and Amethyst looked at Naruto before realizing that it would be the blonde's first Mother's Day with an actual mother. 
the two remembered how Naruto told them that back in Kanoa, his holidays, his birthday included, were very depressing for him as those days were days where the blonde felt truly alone. D don't worry, Naruto, Pearl nervously said as she was slightly fearing another incident back when Steven threw those parties for the gems, I'm sure that Garnet will be back before Mother's Day even begins. Amethyst quickly rushed towards the blonde and said, Yeah, your mom's the best there is when it comes to some of the missions, don't worry. I I Naruto quietly said before realization dawned on him, I only have a few days to find Kachan a Mother's Day gift. Both Jim's face vaulted at the blonde's shock before seeing him run through the door in blinding speed. He was worried about getting Garnet a gift. Pearl thought of her boyfriend's antics, whoever said Naruto is unpredictable had hit the nail right on the head. Kanahigakure Kakashi was sitting on the windowsill of his home, reading his favorite book when he suddenly sneezed. I wonder who could be talking about me? The Jonin thought out loud, I hope Naruto's doing all right, I actually miss his hyperactive attitude. Hey mommy, said a small girl from the street below, someone dropped their book. Oh crap. Beach City, Suitcase Sam's. Naruto was looking at some of the bags on the store's shelves as he tried to think of a good gift for Garnet. I wonder if Kasan would like any of these, Naruto said to himself as he looked at the different purses and shoulder bags, some of these look really pricey and I don't have a lot on me. The blonde knew that he couldn't afford any of the nicer looking bags as there wasn't much money in the blonde's pockets from the small odd jobs he had done around the community. Naruto did find a nice red hand purse on the shelf, but it was too much for the blonde with that extra zero. The blonde exited the store as he hung his head in defeat at not being able to get something for Garnet. Hello, Naruto, said an elderly voice as Naruto looked to see an elderly woman walking towards him, how are you today? The blonde smiled at the elderly woman and said, I'm alright, oh banana, just trying to find a nice gift for Kachan. Nain Fua smiled as she patted the blonde on the back as she said, I'm sure that you'll find something nice for her, although I am a bit concerned for Steven. What do you mean? Naruto asked as he received a slight shock look from Nain Fua. Oh that's right, the elderly woman said with slight sadness, you've only been here for a couple of months. Please? Follow me and I'll treat you to some nice stew. Naruto easily hid the green look on his face as he remembered that last stew he had as Kurama said, never dot again. Beach City, Fish Stew Pizza Naruto was slowly eating the beef stew that Nainfu had made for him, thanking the heavens that it wasn't fish stew, as the elderly woman let out a sad sigh. I guess I should start by saying that you and Steven have a bit of similarities when it comes to days like Mother's Day. Nainfuwa began as the blonde listened silently, although thankfully the boy didn't have it as bad as you might have had it. Naruto slightly nodded as he remembered how the villagers have told him how no woman would ever dare give birth to such a monster and other choice words that he'd rather not say in front of the elderly woman at her own place of business. Like you, Nainfuwa continued as she laced her fingers together. Stephen never knew about his mother as she had died during the process of giving birth to him. I've never seen poor Gregory in such a sad state when he mentioned his wife being cremated sometime after Stephen's birth. Naruto took another bite of the stew as he saw a small tear in the woman's eye as he thought, a tuto dot guess there are some things aside from being gems we share in common. Wiping away the tear, Nainfua said. I remember the few times I would see the poor child so sad and lonely when he walks by. It just breaks my heart to see a young child who is so happy-go-lucky like his father look so sad. Naruto swallowed the food in his mouth before he asked, You know where I might be able to find Steven, oh banana? The elderly woman sadly shook her head and said, I'm afraid no one knows where that boy goes off to, not even Amethyst and your sweetheart. Your mother and Greg might know where he might be if you're worried about him. Naruto nodded and thanked Nainfua for the meal and telling him about Steven before rushing out the door. Mom, Kofi asked as he appeared behind the counter, was that Naruto just now? Nainfua nodded as she said, he's probably going to go look for Steven after I told him about how the boy spends his mother's day. Kofi hid a sigh as he remembered those times as well as he thought. Hopefully Naruto can help Steven with this pain. Beach City, 
It's a wash car wash. Greg was humming a small tune as he was hosing some of the soap away when Naruto appeared. Hey, Naruto, said the man with a smile on his face, need help finding a gift for Garnet? The blonde shook his head and said, I'd appreciate the offer, but right now I was wondering where Steven might be. Greg let out a sigh as he had a feeling this day may turn up and Naruto wouldn't have a clue about where Steven might be. Look, Naruto. Greg sadly said as shut the hose off, I know that you're worried about Steven and I'm glad that he looks up to you like a brother, but he needs his space at the moment. The man then reached in his back pocket and pulled out a small folded piece of paper before giving it to Naruto. This is just a small map to where Steven and I usually go on days like Mother's Day, Greg said with a satin look on his face, I'm sure he'll be there on that day. Is there anywhere Steven might be now? Naruto asked as Greg shook his head. I'm afraid not, the man said sadly, Steven can surprisingly be private on days like this. Naruto sadly nodded before thanking the man and leaving, not seeing Greg walk toward the back of his van. Opening the doors gently, Greg looked on the mattress to see the sleeping form of his son with tear stains on his face. I hope this year will turn out better this time, son. Greg thought to himself as he sat next to Steven and began to stroke the curly black locks on his son's head, for both you and Naruto. Beach City, Crystal Temple The next day found Naruto walking around the beach in hopes of finding Steven, but he hasn't had much luck today. Damn it, Atuto, Naruto silently cursed to himself, where are you? The blonde had actually looked everywhere for Steven, Naruto checked the pier, Greg's car wash. Steven's favorite restaurants, and even risking a trip to the arcade, but he couldn't find the boy anywhere even after triple checking through his shadow clones. Naruto knew things would be different for himself as he finally has a mother to celebrate Mother's Day with, but he never imagined things would be this drastic. Sighing in defeat, Naruto walked towards the temple as he had a feeling that he would have better luck in finding Steven tomorrow. Don't worry Kit. Kurama said as he knew how serious this was, you have that map that Greg had given you, so just wait until tomorrow and follow the map. But what if Kachan returns, Naruto thought as he was able to find a nice gift for Garnet and still have enough for the two cakes he bought, I want to surprise her. Listen, the demon fox continued, right now, Steven is acting like you were back in the village when he doesn't need to. I'm sure that you can find a way to help him, you always do. Just give him his space for the moment. Letting out a sigh, Naruto reluctantly decided to head back in the temple so that he could come up with a plan for tomorrow when Garnet would come back. Inside, Naruto was looking over a small list after he checked on the cake in the fridge. He had placed a note for others to not eat the cake, but he did have a feeling that Amethyst would eat the cake anyway. Good thing I was able to get another cake. Naruto thought as he remembered the smaller cake he hid in the freezer under Steven's cookie cats. Naruto placed the list on the coffee table as his mind went back to Steven and what Nainfua had told him. If anything, Naruto was sort of jealous of Steven that he had people to look after him as Naruto himself barely had anyone back in the village before graduating the academy. He was always alone on Mother's Day, felt disappointed in himself on Father's Day and lived in fear on his birthday. And here I am worried about how my first actual Mother's Day will be like, Naruto thought with a pained scowl on his face, I feel like a complete ass. Naruto heard the door to the deeper parts of the temple open to reveal Pearl walking out and look at the blonde. How was your day today? Pearl asked as Naruto gave her a small, sad smile. I was able to get Kachan a present and some cake for her, Naruto began before his smile faded but I'm kind of worried about Steven. I mean, here I am trying to celebrate my first Mother's Day with an actual mother and Atuto is out there without one of his own. I feel like a big jerk. Pearl placed a hand on her boyfriend's shoulder and said, I know how you feel as we really don't know what to do as we never had celebrated days like Mother's Day. Pearl saw the small wrapped box next to Naruto and had a feeling that the present was for Garnet before she said. Maybe you can invite Steven to spend time with you and Garnet. Would it really be that simple? Naruto mentally asked himself as he thought on the idea, could I really invite Steven to spend time with me and Kechan? Pearl saw the lamenting look on the blonde's face and said, 
I know you'll do what's best for Steven, Naruto. You're just the kind of person who deeply cares about others and wouldn't like them be hurt like you were. Naruto blushed as his girlfriend wrapped him in a hug before the two kissed each other. After the kiss, Pearl looked at Naruto and asked, What does a tuto mean? The blonde smiled gently as he said, Little brother. Beach City, Cave Mother's Day had arrived and Naruto was walking on the beach to a small secluded cave as he was following the map. Garnet hadn't arrived yet, so that bought Naruto some time to find Steven by following the small map Greg had given to him. This is the cave, said Naruto as he took another look at the small map that had a small cave that was labeled Rose's Grotto that had small pink hearts on it, hopefully Steven's in here somewhere. Naruto walked inside as he used his gems to create a small light to see through the dark, damp cave. He wanted to call out to Steven, but he was afraid of startling him as Naruto had gone through this back in Kanoa. The blonde continued to walk deeper and deeper until he heard something echo through the cave. It was faint, but he could hear a voice from inside the deeper parts of the cave. Is that singing? Naruto thought as he carefully navigated over the damp rocks and gravel. Naruto continued to explore deeper until he discovered an amazing sight, a huge lake that was surrounded in pink crystals with a statue of a woman standing erect near the lake. Taking a closer look, Naruto saw that the statue was in the form of rose quartz and right next to the statue was little Steven Universe with a sad look on his face. Hiding in the shadows, Naruto carefully edged along the wall as he listened to Steven sing towards the statue. I want a mom that will last forever. I want a mom to make it all better. I want a mom that will last forever. I want a mom who will love me whatever. I want a mom that will take my hand. And make me feel like a holiday. A mom that will tuck me in the night. And chase the monsters away. I want a mom who will read me stories. And sing a lullaby. And if I had a bad dream. To hold me when I cry. Oh. I want a mom that will last forever. I want a mom to make it all better. I want a mom that will last forever. I want a mom that will love me whatever. Forever. A tuto dot Naruto thought as he could see the tears in Steven's face as the song had stabbed his heart with memories of his own. The blonde stayed quiet so that Steven could continue his song. When she says to me. She will always be there. To watch and protect me. I don't have to be scared. Oh and when she says to me. I will always love you. I won't need to worry. Cause I know that it's true. Kanahigakure. Tsunade was sitting in her office and was looking out the window towards the village. She pulled out a small photo she got from Denzaku town when Naruto and Jiraiya were sent to get her. Naruto had a great big grin on his face as he stood between Jiraiya and Tsunade with Shizun behind him. I miss you so much Gaki, Tsunade said as she placed the photo on the desk and pulled out a small bottle of sake. I know it's Mother's Day, the woman said as she raised the bottle in the air for a toast, but this is for you dot 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 my little grandson. Shizun walked by the door to the office and saw her master taking a swig of sick and decided for once to not say anything at the moment as Tsunade had really needed this right now as she too was missing the little ball of sunshine. Beach City Rose's Grotto. Naruto felt more tears sneaking up on him as he had a feeling that someone was badly missing him. Bachan, Naruto thought to himself as Tsunade entered his mind, I wish you were here. The blonde remained quiet as Steven continued to sing. I want a mom when I get lonely. Who will take time to play. A mom who can be a friend. And a rainbow when it's gray. I want a mom to read me stories and sing a lullaby. And if I have a bad dream. To hold me when I cry. Oh, I want a mom that will last forever. I want a mom to make it all better. I want a mom that will last forever. I want a mom that will love me whatever. Forever. I want a mom that will love me forever. I want a mom to make it all better. I want a mom that will last forever. I want a mom that will love me whatever. Forever. I want a mom. I want a mom. I want a mom that'll last forever. I want a mom that'll last forever. I want a mom.
I want a mom. I want a mom that'll last forever. I want a mom. I want a mom that'll last forever. I want a mom that'll last forever. Stephen fell to his knees in defeat as he whispered, I want a mom. Naruto carefully walked out of the shadows, tears rolling down his face as the echoes in the grotto kept stabbing into his heart. The blonde was able to get close to Stephen as the boy silently sobbed. Naruto kneeled down next to Stephen and gave the boy a small hug while the boy returned the hug and cried into Naruto's shirt. How much pain have you held back, Naruto thought as he gently rubbed Stephen's back, a tuto. The two remained hugging before Stephen let go and asked, How did you find me? Only Dad and Garnet know about this place. Naruto looked at Stephen with tear-stained eyes and said, your father gave me a small map when he saw how worried I was. The young boy rubbed the tears out of his eyes and off of his face before he said, I'm sorry if I had you worried, Naruto, it's just. Naruto and Steven looked at the statue as the boy then said, I just wish I could know more about her or even meet her. Naruto saw the saddened look on Steven's face before he said, Well, little brother, I know what it feels like dot to be alone on days like this. Steven looked up and saw the tears forming in the blonde's eyes as Naruto continued, I was so lonely that isolation on the holidays had become sort of my own ritual for my own protection. Back then dot in the village dot I couldn't let them see me cry or see my pain as they would use it to their advantage to deal more hurt to me, but here. Tears were now falling freely from Naruto's face as the blonde couldn't stop them dot nor did he want to. I'm finally free. Naruto said as he sobbed with his voice cracking, I'm sob I'm finally free to sob to let out all of my pain after so many years. Naruto's painful sobs echoed through the cave as the blonde then fell to his knees and began to punch the stone floor, ignoring the throbbing pain and small amount of blood from his knuckles. Steven watched as his brother figure continued to punch the ground before stopping, allowing the younger boy to wrap the blonde into a hug. That felt. Sniff so good. Naruto said as he dried his eyes before looking at Steven. I know, said Steven with a smile, big bro. Both of them got to their feet and stared at the statue. Rose-san, said Naruto with pride in his voice as he looked at the statue's face, I am very glad that I met someone like your son to have as a brother and finally found someone that I could call a mother as well as finding a place where I feel welcomed. I would also like to tell you that I'm very proud to have Steven here as my Atuto. My little brother. The two of them smiled with great pride in their hearts as they left, but little did they know was that the two boys were being watched by the spirits of Kashina and Rose Quartz. Our boys seem to have developed a loving bond with one another, said Rose with a harmonic tone in her voice. Of course, Rose, said Kashina with a smile on her face, those two will be brothers even through a thousand lifetimes. The two spirits faded away back to their proper places. Waiting for the time to reveal themselves to their sons. Beach City, Crystal Temple Garnet had just arrived when Naruto and Steven walked through the door. Hey Kasan, Naruto sat as he rushed towards the gym and gave her a hug, Happy Mother's Day. Garnet smiled as she hugged her son, glad that he was doing alright. Thank you, Naruto said Garnet before she saw Stephen, how are you doing today, Stephen? Stephen walked up and wrapped his arms around Garnet and said, I'm doing alright thanks to my big brother, Naruto. Garnet smiled at Stephen's new attitude as she couldn't help but be excited for Mother's Day for once as the two boys before her were now beginning Well to that's heal. the ending of that chapter, I do hope you enjoy this video if you like to see more remember to hit that like button subscribe to this channel and leave a comment down below until next time.